the essence of david howey's book the limits of capital lies in its exploration of the limits contradictions crises tendencies and irrationality inherent within capitalism grounded in a meticulous analysis of marx's writings his mastery of the original text is commendable offering readers a profound understanding of marx's arguments how his writing is engaging effectively conveying his views while navigating through conflicting interpretations of marx's work he fearlessly critiques marx's marx's analysis where he perceives shortcomings thus initiating an inquiry into the boundaries of marxian thought the initial seven chapters of the book constitute a meticulous examination of marx's theory culminating in what harvey describes as a first cut thesis rooted in the contradictory nature of capitalist production particularly influenced by marx's notion of the falling rate of profit harvey skillfully addresses various critiques of marx illustrating the depth and nuance of marx's work and refuting claim and refuting claims of technological determinism by emphasizing the social dimensions of marx's analysis however he is not merely a blind adherent to marx he adeptly critiques marx's own limitations notably regarding the transformation problem and mission problem and the concept of the falling rate of profit how we resolve some of these issues particularly by reconciling the differing notions of accumulation presented in different volumes of capital he argues that the credit system serves as a mechanism to standardize turnover time thing as a common basis chapter 1 sets the stage by delving into the foundational concepts of marxian analysis with a particular emphasis on the labor theory of value class relations and principles of accumulation central to capitalism he explains these concepts ste explains these concepts steering clear of the intricate debates often found in marxist literature such as the transformation problem throughout the book the issue of value remains prominent informing various aspects of harvey's examination chapter 2 shifts focus to the structure of production and distribution of wage labor subsequently the conception sphere takes center stage in chapter 3 where harvey endeavors to integrate keynesian and kalkian theories with marxian analysis though with some divergence in thought chapters 4 and 5 delve into the dynamics of technological mix of technological change the labor process and the organization of capitalist production harvey contends that technology is not an autonomous force but rather a tool shaped by class relations to sustain labor productivity and drive capital accumulation he explains how te- he explains how technological advancements reflect and perpetuate class antagonisms ultimately leading to the domination of labor in service of capital accumulation by the end of chapter 4 how we lays the groundwork for a marxian theory of the capitalist labor process emphasizing the pervasive class domination throughout production he highlights the de-skilling of labor and the intensification of exploitation as manifestations of capitalism's imperative for accumulation chapter 5 of the book stands out as an exemplary exploration of the inner tensions within capital capitalism particularly regarding its structuring around principles of market decentralization how we captures the ongoing struggle between decentralization and centralization within the capitalist framework going beyond the surface level behaviors of individual enterprises to unveil the conscious in doing so his analysis aligns with contemporary efforts such as those of pure and others to comprehend the formal organization of alternative market exchange regimes how we portray capitalism not as a natural or inevitable phenomenon but rather as a deliberately crafted rather as a deliberately crafted system governed by rules and procedures throughout the book his aim is to unravel the tensions and contradictions inherent in capitalism a task formalized in chapters 6 and 7 which focus on accumulation reproduction and crisis
here labor's relationships here labor's relationship with capital and the overarching structure of capitalism takes center stage revealing how the seemingly rational behavior of individual capitalists can pose existential threats to the entire system Harvey's first cut theory of crisis revolves around the falling ration and the devaluation of capital. He suggests that the focus on the falling rate of profit somewhat obscures the fundamental insight of capital, the perpetual disequilibrium between productive forces and social relations under capitalism. By the end of the initial section, readers are treated to a clear and in- treated to a clear and insightful introduction to Marx's theory. characterized by Harvey's constructive and candid approach in the subsequent chapters he endeavors to extend marx's analysis into unfamiliar territories he explores mechanisms that temporarily surpass the inherent tendency such as the development of new circulatory forms and credit regulation leading to what he terms a second cut theory of capitalist crisis by chapter 10 This theory builds upon the initial framework rather than replacing it emphasizing the moderating role of credit systems in mitigating the destabs in mitigating the destabilizing effects of capitalist competition how his second cut crisis theory explains that while credit systems moderate crises stemming from unbridled competition they introduce a new set of contradictions particularly manifested in the antagonism between the financial system and its monetary base the persistence of over accumulation fueled by the proliferation of fictitious capital tends to precipitate speculative bubbles and financial crises necessitating increased state intervention consequently crises transform from pure political crises as state involvement becomes crucial in managing financial instability the final three chapters of the book shift focus back to the built environment introducing geography as a key element in harvey's third cut theory of crisis this integration hinges on theory of crisis this integration hinges on a particular conception of space emphasizing its dynamic and context dependent nature how his analysis foregrounds location as a central consideration yet it remains deeply interconnected with previous discussions for instance his examine capitalism's organization offers insights into the spatial arrangement of the economic system while his analysis of the labor process lays the groundwork for exploring spatial divisions of labor Throughout these chapters Harvey's adept synthesis of economic and geographical perspectives enriches our understanding of capitalism's complexities and sheds light on the intricate interplay between space and socio-economic dynamics. He expresses hope that the theoretical discussions presented within the text will not only enhance the study of history but also inform the formulation of political practices of political practices. The book offers valuable insights that can be applied across various domains as evidenced by the critical examination of capitalist production and its impact on housing land speculation and urban planning. He challenges conventional economic perspectives by shedding light on the in-housing relations. How he argues that phenomena like land speculation and property boom and bust cycles are not aberrations but rather integral components of capitalist social relations by contextualizing these dynamics within the broader framework of capitalist accumulation he provides a nuanced understanding of the interconnectedness between spatial configurations financial speculation and crisis formation How his analysis extends beyond housing to encompass broader discussions on differential rent, government intervention and the evolving nature of capitalist institutions. He underscores the institutions. He underscores the continuous transformation inherent in capitalist processes, cautioning against oversimplified comparisons that fail to capture the dynamic nature of social change. One of the book's major achievements is its exploration of the contradictory unity of time and space in cap how he demonstrates how capitalist accumulation redefines temporal and geographical horizons leading to both order and chaos
by highlighting the dialectical relationship between spatial organization and disorganization he emphasizes the centrality of space to social analysis while acknowledging its complex interplay with temporal dynamics throughout his book harvey presents marx's ideas with a commanding authority aiming to offer what he perceives as the most developed interpretation compared to previous attempts however there are some potential shortcomings in harvey's approach that was firstly harvey's pursuit of a correct interpretation may unknowingly lead to a form of originalism wherein he seeks to uphold a definitive interpretation where none may truly exist interpretation by its nature is subjective and normative shaped by evolving contexts and perspectives in contexts and perspectives while harvey navigates through marx's text with depth and insight it's essential to recognize the inner and limitations of attempting to pin down a single authoritative interpretation secondly harvey's analysis of the state within capitalism appears somewhat appears somewhat conventional emphasizing its functional role in ensuring the reproduction of capitalist relations while he acknowledges the state's significance his treatment may overlook its relative autonomy and the complexities of its actions beyond merely serving capitalist interests this limits further exploration to better understand its multifaceted role in society thirdly how his treatment of time and space may be overly abstract lacking sufficient integration of marxist and keynesian perspectives on economic cycles by compartmentalizing short run and long run dynamics run and long run dynamics harvey risks overlooking the interconnectedness and fluidity of economic processes over time additionally his conceptualization of space as primarily functional rather than inherently dynamic or relational may overlook its broader significance